Hey guys, it's Michelle, and I'm here with part one of my November wrap-up. My November wrap-up was too long, so I broke it into two parts. This month, I started 12 novels, but finished 10. So, I'll tell you how that happened and why as we go along. First, I picked up Blackbirds by Chuck Wendig. This is the first in a series of his, and the main character is Marion Black. She has this ability to touch another person and get a vision of when and how they're going to die, and she can usually puzzle out where. She leads kind of a seedy lifestyle, and early on there is something strange with one of the visions, and it was very intriguing and made me want to read on. I liked the writing style, um, and I liked the premise and where it was going. However, uh, Miriam has very low self-respect, she entered into a relationship that, although it was consensual, it was very unhealthy in my opinion. And that is just not the type of idea I want planted in my head. I just couldn't deal with it. And so I uh, chose to DNF the book at 33%. So I moved on to Confess by Colleen Hoover. This was my third Colleen Hoover novel. She writes romance, uh, mostly new adult, and this one was obvious, was definitely in the new adult category. You have two young people who meet. She's a hairdresser. He is an artist. Um, it was pretty cool how they met. Their first dance was really cute. Um, it was a good story. There was something neat with their names, his initials, all kinds of stuff going on. But normally in a Colleen Hoover book, the reason the relationship is so angsty is very plausible. And on her side, it was in this case, but his side, it was a little tenuous in my opinion. Also, usually your side characters and subplots are somewhat serious, but also add a lot of lightheartedness to the story. And in this case, they were almost exclusively serious. And it just kind of brought the reading enjoyment down for me. Why would you read New Adult if it's not for fun? And this just wasn't very fun. So I ended up giving it three stars. Not my favorite Colleen Hoover. If you're going to read her, I would recommend starting with Maybe Someday or um, another book that I'll talk about in part two of my wrap up. And Slam was okay as well. Next, I picked up Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson. This is book two in the Remnant Chronicles. And I love book one, Kiss of Deception. I love trying to figure out which guy was the assassin, which guy was the prince. Um, and I really enjoyed the turn that it took at the end uh, to kind of set the rest of the series up. So when I started reading Heart of Betrayal, it kept referencing the last third of Kiss of Deception. And it expected me to remember Leah's relationship with certain characters and I just didn't remember and the author wasn't helping me out by like re-explaining it and I thought oh, okay this is just the beginning of the book it'll get better well at 25% in it not only was still happening it seemed to be happening in more significant areas and I thought you know what I'm gonna have to go back and reread book one and if I'm gonna do that I might as well wait until the whole series is out and see if I'm still interested in picking it up then so I put that one on hold. So it was November 5th, and I have DNF'd one book and put another one on hold, and I'm like, is this a reading slump? Am, am I in a book hangover? What is going on here? But I needn't have worried. Next, I picked up The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. It's been getting a lot of buzz on BookTube, but the most I'd heard anybody say is the characters are diverse, and it's sci-fi, and it's really good. Um, so I'm hoping to shed a little more light for you guys. This is a story about a crew who works on a ship and this ship stays in space. It never goes down to planets. Its job is to build wormhole tunnels. Now there are four humans on board, three, uh, creatures who are from alien species. And then there's also the artificial intelligence who has a personality that runs this ship. Um, they decide they might want to take on some bigger, more complicated jobs, and the captain decides they need a clerk. So they hire a clerk. Now, she has lived planet-side her whole life. She's never been a spacer. So through her eyes, the author gets to introduce you to what space life is like, what the ship is like, what the crew is like, all these relationships. And she writes phenomenal relationships, very vivid characters, and just awesome dialogue. I was laughing at 3% into the book, and I was like, okay, this is going to be amazing. 
This is the weirdest sci-fi I've ever read. It is character driven, not plot driven. So instead of, you know, characters being like minor things that cause a plot to move along, it's exactly the opposite. The plot is there simply to allow the characters to go through more development. Uh, with your hodgepodge of characters coming from different social uh, backgrounds and that kind of thing, she tackles all kinds of issues. Each character goes on a development arc and it, she looks at things like personal adornment, um, whether that be physical, uh, cyber parts, or you know, genetic tweaking. She looks at who in a society should raise the young and how should that be set up. She looks at the role of medicine and the role that religion plays in that. She looks at things like uh, views on public displays of affection and sexuality and nudity. She looks at interspecies relationships, which you could, you know, correlate to lots of different things uh, back here in the real world. And even things like is it okay to just be really good at what you do or do you should do you have some kind of obligation to try to do more and push yourself further? So just super interesting overall and her dialogue, like I said, amazing and I can't wait to see what else she comes up with. I gave it five stars. All right, next I picked up Our Souls at Night by Kent Haroof. Now he is an established author. Sadly, this is his last novel and he knew that as he was writing it, he was ill. Um, this is about two people in their 70s. She's a widow. He's a widower. And they were acquaintances, but they strike up a relationship. It's so cute how it starts. It's interesting to see the difference between elderly people starting a relationship and younger people starting a relationship and just the things that they do and don't have to deal with. It's the similarities and differences were just so, so fun to read about. It's very sparsely written. It was interesting to see how their neighbors reacted, their family, that kind of thing, and then how they handled it in the end. It was just so just comforting and genuine, and it was just an amazing read. I really enjoyed it. Now, all of his novels are set in Holt, Colorado, which is a fictional town, and at one point, the characters are going to a play that is supposedly set in this fictional town as well. And they have this kind of meta discussion about, I've never heard about, you know what the plot of this is, right? Well, I've never heard of that kind of thing happening to anybody in our town, have you? Well, really, it's sort of a little mini commercial for some of his other works. It worked like a charm. I ended up adding Plain Song, which is the first of a trilogy of his to my TBR. So I hope to check that out in the future. I ended up giving Our Souls at Night four stars. So that kind of ends the first part of my November wrap-up. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you again in part two. Happy reading.